Praise the Lord. Please be seated. I tell you, uh, this is probably the first time I have ministered, thank you, God's word and, and not know if I was going to teach or preach. Ain't got a clue. I'm going to let God have his way. How about that? Yeah. That's what we're going to do. Give honor to my good bishop and pastor, and Sister Betcher. Who enjoyed that message Sunday? Yeah. I tell you, it's no better feeling. I was up here uh, yelling it. They get it. They get it. And when you when you yeah. when you see the entire body, it just the light goes on. I tell you, that that makes it all worth it. It makes it all worth it. I'm not home. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this evening that I have with these precious people. What an opportunity we have tonight, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. And I just ask that your anointing be upon me, God, to minister your word as you're laid it upon my heart in the service of these people, God. Prepare our hearts and minds and our spirits to receive the word of God. Right now, in Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk to you tonight from this title. Church is the body, not the building. It's not the building. If I'm at work, I'm having church. I'm at the grocery store. I'm a walking altar. If I'm giving a testimony or witness to somebody, I am having church. Direct your attention to Acts chapter 20, verse 28. My, my, my goal, my focus tonight is to, it's two things. It's to get you to understand and break that thinking of the building, some structure as being the church. And second is to get you to understand that we, you, me, I, as the church, what responsibility we have and encourage you to exercise that authority. In Jesus' name. We done catching. I'm done getting slapped around by the enemy. <laughs> Acts chapter 20, beginning at verse 28. Take heed, there said, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. A lot of times we wrap that scripture and we, we, we take that scripture and we hang it around Pastor By's neck, Bishop's neck, my neck. Take heed over the church. See, God said because he purchased it with his blood. While there's a degree of truth in that, the focus is he bought the church with his blood. That's a currency none of us got. With his own blood. The Amplified Version says it like this. Take care and be on guard for yourselves and for the whole flock over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as overseers to shepherd, tend, feed, guide the church of God which he bought with his own blood. The church is the people, not the building. I just don't. Come here, Miguel. Stand right here. Don't get nervous. This is the church. <laughs> 
Braden, come here. Stand right by Miguel. This is a church. Come here, Demond. You're on the other side of Miguel. Don't worry, I ain't going to get you. This is the church. I ain't done yet. Come here, chicken. Stand by your brother. That's the church. Sister Jocelyn, come here. Amanda, come here. You're on the other side. You get my point? This is the church. You want a view of what heaven's going to be like? Take a look. That's what God has purchased. This is the body. We are the church. Thank you. The blood that God purchased the church with, you, me, I, is proof positive in that scripture where he says he purchased it. He didn't purchase a building. He purchased the church, the body with his blood. We get wrapped up in Pentecost. Oh, Holy Ghost, Acts 238. Rah, rah, rah. Yeah. But you see, he purchased the church at Calvary. He moved into the church that he bought at Pentecost. Filling you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The blood, the blood, the blood empowers us. It doesn't enforce us. You see, it empowers us to be who God has called us to be. But it's still our choice. It's paid for. But are you going to step into it? I'm really fixing to mess with you now. God has zero interest in a one-night stand with his church. Well, I don't... Yeah, here we go. Zero. This thing is for eternity. The Mary Supper of the Lamb. That is for eternity. Not some little, I feel good on Sunday, and then Monday, okay, there's the one night stand, and then, no, no interest in that. A sustained, spiritual, faithful, loyal, committed relationship with God. That's the church. problem we have there, we, is that, Pastor By alluded to it, this flesh, it can be something else. Pastor By said, I drag, yeah, flesh, we going to pray. Here we going, he's right. Billy Cole said, you can take care of the devil in 10 seconds, like that. It's the flesh that takes 20 years to deal with. Our biggest problem ain't the worst serial killer, murderer, adulterer out there. It's the Trojan horse that's creeped onto our pews to try and invade the church, the body. That's our biggest issue. The church is a living, breathing, mobile entity that promotes, exhorts, and propels the kingdom of God forward. The church 
is unrestrained, unhindered, and unrestricted in its mission to evangelize the world. Iron sharpeneth iron. I have never. March 5th, 2000, I was baptized in Jesus' name. I came out the water speaking in tongues. So that's 2000. This is 2021. That's 21 years. And I have never, ever disrespected the leadership. Now, we've been through some things. Don't get nervous. I'm trying to help you about your responsibility as being the church. The church has to take its cue, its direction, its true north from him. See, unified in the spirit. If I'm talking to him and he's talking to him and you're talking to him, then there should be zero conflict in the body. Yeah. Mobile church, that's us, the people, the body. Jesus had church in the temple. He had church by the riverside. He had church in the wilderness. He had church in the streets. The key is he had church. His sole focus was to train those boys, teach them, guide them. And even in all that, they have got God incarnate teaching them, guiding them. And you still got a couple of them who grab mama to ask him, Lord, let my boys sit on your right hand and the one on the left. I want them to be up here and beside the other ones. God incarnate. And you still got this thing, this pecking order thing going on. Why? What for? You know, recently I was praying. I think I shared this with the pastors on a text thread. I said, God, I don't want to fail. God, that's all I'm praying. That sounds like a good prayer, don't it? I don't want to fail. God rebuked me. That presence of God went, went from that sweet presence of God to a sharp rebuke. And the Lord spoke to me and said, that's pride. God, I don't want to fail. How's that pride? You see, because... God doesn't fail. He's perfect. And if I'm following after him, there is no failure. And that's what he said. I'm not going to fail. If you are worried about failure, then you worried about your abilities, what you can do, how you can do it. We are the church. 1 Corinthians 16, beginning at verse 15. I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus. That is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. That's a powerful word, addicted. That means that their very being and essence. Is drawn, can't live without, got to have. All they think about is the ministry of the body, the edification of the body. Verse 16, that ye submit yourselves unto such. I want you to do the same thing. And to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth, I am glad of the coming of Stephanus and Fortunatus and Achaicus, for that which was lacking on your part they have supplied, for they have refreshed my spirit and yours, therefore acknowledge ye them that are such. The churches of Asia salute you. Watch this. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house. The 
church that is in their house. I told you, the church is mobile. Your house should be having church. Yeah. On the job, should be having church. Priscilla and Aquila, she said, I salute you, Paul said, for having church at the house. This is the concept of life groups. Y'all thought it was just a fellowship. Have a good little meal and talk to some of your friends. Everything we do here is biblically based. Everything. Colossians 4.14, Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Salute the brethren which are in Laodicea and Memphis and the church which is in his house. Are you having church? Having church ain't hard. It's not. I didn't say having fellowship. I said having church isn't hard. You want to know how you know if you're having church? You, if you're in the grocery store and somebody stops you and say, I just got to ask you something. There's something different about you. Or you're in the restaurant. And they come by your table and they say, it's something different, can I? There's different ways to have church. I recently had a mentoring session. We had breakfast. And the waiter comes by. And if any of you know who spent time with me, I keep church cards in my wallet. I pulled out the church card, and I didn't just say, hey, here, I go to Bartley United Pentecost Church, here, here, take a card. No. Bishop Wood testified this. I looked at him. I said, this card will change your life if you use it. Now he's intrigued. He said, I get lots of cards from lots of church folks to come in here, but it ain't this card. Bishop spoke up, said, we got a thriving hyphen group. Because he said it's, he, was, he was around y'all age. He said, really? It's a lot of y'all? Like that? It's your church? Yeah, we're not old fogies. <laughs> we, we have church. We are the body, diverse. Minister to all. Edify all. Preach to all, minister to all, faithful to all, love all. We are the church. The church is the beacon for a given community, but needs to be representative of the larger demographic. It has to be. There are folks that you can reach that will, that will never look at me or think twice. Absolutely. There are people that will listen to us. The issue isn't, are they hungry? It's not the, it's not the issue. It's, uh, it's, are we available? That's the issue. 1 Corinthians 9, 19. For though... I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more. That's what Paul said. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law, as under the law. Why? That I might gain them that are under the law. He's reaching, the point he's getting here. A lot of folks take this scripture and say, see, well, I'm trying to win this person. They like to go to the bar, so I'm going to the bar. No, 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 no. No, it don't work that way. Or this one, you know, this one like to, you know, get high, so I'm get high. Mm -mm. Well, I'm trying to win them. You know, I don't have a job, so I'm going to rob the bank so I can pay tithe on what I robbed. No, it doesn't work that way. 
What Paul here is saying that I might gain them that are under the law. In their situation, I'm trying to relate to them and show them it's a better way. And he goes on to say, verse 21, to them that are without the law, as without the law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without the law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. The larger demographic. Me and that waiter probably ain't have nothing in common. But you know what? I'm going to reach. I'm going to reach. No matter what. See, we all got to get on the same page. That's the key. Pass our biases, opinions. See, trying to make me think y'all like, 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 I'm, like I'm out here on an island. Every one of us in here has biases, opinions, and get just certain type. Every one of us. Every one of us. But we've got to get past that. The only way the church is going to fulfill its potential, the church, you and I, is if we are humbled and submitted enough to receive the guidance and correction from God that we need. Period. And I know it's not popular. I feel it. I feel it. But that's okay. Because it's the truth anyway. The mission of the church, the New Testament is 27 books. Discipleship, letters, church edification and establishment, Pauline epistles to the established churches, and the history, Acts. That's pretty much what the New Testament is made up of. But watch this. Half of, the, half of them are on discipleship. Establishment and edification, the other half are personal letters on their actions on behalf of the church. The establishment of the churches across the then known world was after Jesus' resurrection was proof of his teachings and intent. Paul wrote over half the New Testament. And guess who he was writing to? The church. And you know who the other half he was writing to? The disciples that he was That tells me that's important. So, excuse the term, when this guy says we need to meet because, you know, doing a mentoring thing, guess what? And this is me. Please don't take this the wrong way. This is just what I do. Guess what? My work calendar goes morning off. I don't want to be rushed by what God's trying to show me or teach me. <laughs> I don't want to miss because I'm on the clock. Can you hurry up, Pastor? What if he's got to tell me something sharp? I need time to chew on it. I need time to digest it. He needs time to feel my spirit from across that table and look at me in the eyes and see where I'm at. I'm going to keep using me. Come on, Jesus, because I know I'm plowing. If we take our direction from him, when the counsel and the guidance comes, it won't taste like gravel. It'll be like honey. The church. God have mercy. Can't get What? Why let something called pride get in the way? One of the toughest times I had since being here was when I stopped doing the prison ministry. I was a mess. This guy, I tell you, he called me every day, got on my nerves. 
Brother, call me back. Text me. How you doing, brother? Leave me alone. I just want to wallow. I just want to cry. Just let me, you know. And they're asking me, you know, gotta get back in, don't you know? We got other sis, sisters in church coming, giving me a word from God. It was the toughest thing I was I had went through. And I remember thinking, God telling me. The devil can't break you if you're already in pieces before the cross. That was a word from God that got me up and back out in the saddle. Thank God for them texting and calling me, making sure, you know, I'm all right. But it was tough. It was hard. One day, Devon walked in the door, and I'm in my office. He just walked in, and I'm bawling, and he just looks at me. He ain't seen his father like that. I try to get myself together, and he just put his arm around me. He said, I guess I came at the right time. It's the body, the church. And that's, and I, now, now, now watch, when that same body calls and texts you and walks in your house and put their arm around you and love you when you're going through a tough time, you keep that same spirit when that counsel comes. Amen. Keep that same spirit. Be welcoming of the same counsel when it's something you don't like. Let's move on. Matthew chapter 28, begin in Amplified, beginning in verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Help the people to learn of me, believe in me, obey my words. That's the purpose. Go ye therefore, make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, remaining with you perpetually, regardless of circumstance and on every occasion, even to the end of the age. That is the purpose of the church. It's going to cost you something. It costs you a few dollars. God will replenish it. Uh, Money, 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 money. Come here, Jeremy. <laughs> if anybody knows, me and this young man, how I feel about this young man. We've been through it, ain't we? Yeah. I have given this young man some very tough counsel. I've looked across at him at a table before and told him, you can't do it. And he looked back at me and said, yes, I can. I smiled and I said, then I'm on board with you. Let me tell you something. The church, the body, we have not always agreed. I've been right. But he can disagree. But in his disagreement, he submitted. The body. What am I doing over the past 10 months? Besides going to Dino's with him. I'm driving things into him. I hold him accountable. Trying to help him grow, discipling. Ah, well, this is where we got to go. This is what I need you to do. Uh, uh, come on now. This is where we got to go. All right, all right. That's what I'm doing investing, pouring in, paying forward. I'm not doing anything for him that he has done for me. What well, he teaches me and pours into me, man, that was smart. That was good. Hey, Jeremy, guess what? I want to tell you something. He's looking at me like, oh, oh. Now, that ain't mine. That's a bishop's, but 
It works. Be who you're called to be. Be who you are called to be. You see, the issue isn't if you're in the church, you're part of the church, you're part of the body. The issue isn't does God know your name? He knows everything. He's everywhere. He knows in the stars by name, the sand, the grain of sand, name, the number of hairs on your head are numbered. That's not the issue. Oh, God, I want you to know me, know my name. He already do. <laughs> Quit praying that. You got to pray that. I'm concerned if the enemy knows your name. Does he have does the enemy have to make a plan and assign resources to you? Because, oh God. Oh, Pastor and Sister Bob praying again. Did they go again? Passing again. Oh God. Uh, let, me, let me try and get some note. Does he know your name? Are you plucking souls out of the pit of hell into the kingdom? Are you going behind enemy lines and coming back out with souls in tow on your shoulders? Does the enemy know your name? <laughs> I'm determined that he knows Douglas Edward Williams' name because I am going to pray. I am going to seek God. I am going to fast, even though it don't look like it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to be committed. I'm going to serve the kingdom. I'm going to be the church. And part of that is having a committed, faithful consecration. I started to give them the picture, but I didn't. The other day, Amon had some fellowship. Who knows? I can do so much, I can't keep up. I'm serious. And that's a great thing. I mean, a tight-knit group. Awesome. You need to get, get past and sister by a clap. Again, the way they lead you. And I ain't saying that because he's my friend. I'm saying it because it's the truth. But a mom was going some fellowship thing that had to do with hyphen. And I texted her. I said, bring me a Snickers bag. <laughs> God, I know I need it, but I wanted it. <laughs> well, she comes back whenever, but she knew I was asleep. So she didn't knock on the door. I get up the next morning, and in my prayer chair, I see this Snickers sitting in my prayer chair. It caught me off guard. You know, because if you live in my house, everybody knows you don't touch that chair. If you in that chair touching that chair, you better be talking to God. I'm very serious about that. So I see the Snickers in this chair. And I'm like, what in the world? So I grab and just kind of put it on my desk. And I text her later. I said, what in the world are you doing putting the Snickers on my prayer chair? She said, because... I knew you would be there in the morning. Does the enemy know you're going to rattle the gates of hell with intercessory prayer every single day? Does the enemy know that you are going to be who you are intended to be in the church, in the body, day in, day out, grinding, Getting at it, getting after it, getting after it. There's a young lady named Tabitha in the Bible. She was about purpose, not position. The point of significance with Tabitha was she was an essential part of the New Testament church and functioned in a working capacity. This is after the resurrection. She's functioning. She's doing. She's got a ministry in the New Testament church. So much so that when she gets sick 
and dies, guess who they call? Peter. Acts chapter 9, verse 36. Now, there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha. Wrap your head around that. Disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. She was a functioning disciple in the New Testament church. She was about purpose, not position or title. She was about pushing the kingdom forward in whatever capacity she could. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. And for as much as Lydia was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men desiring him that he would not delay to come to her, excuse me, to come to them. Verse 39, then Peter arose and went with them. She had to be important. She had to be. Now, she ain't got no title, and she ain't, she's not Paul running here and there to the churches and writing letters. But Peter knew who she was. He went. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas had made. Even in death, they're talking about how she worked for the kingdom, how she had church. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up, and when he had called the saints and widow, presented her alive. Raise your hand if you knew who Tabitha was before I read that scripture. Raise your hand if you, if you thought she was a productive member of the New Testament church. See, we knew her name, but we didn't know because we associate productivity with positions. Oh, he's got the title of pastor, so he must be doing something for God. Let me tell you something. Wise man once told me, brother, you can have the title, but they have got to let you pastor them. And they are not going to let you pastor them until you build credibility with them and love them. A shepherd's heart. You build credibility, excuse me, credibility and integrity with God by doing his will, period. And functioning as the body, as the church, as we are intended to do. This isn't rocket science. Everything is constant in this except one variable, us, the flesh. Well, I, well, I know we us, him. I, we, us, him. That's the purpose. To serve, to give the intended purpose of the body of the church. Priscilla and Aquila, Paul raved about them in the scripture. He said, they gave, put their life at risk for me, he said. They were tent makers. They, they evangelized with, with, with Paul. They even uh, showed an evangelist that Paul had discipled how to, do the, how to give the word more eloquently, the scripture says. It's not about position. God, why am I on that? It's about purpose. I know y'all heard it more than 
heard it a thousand times. This is 5% of what, what we do. Bishop said the other day when he got up here, he said, he said something to the effect of, no, be, be with me for a day. One day. When I was a manager at the company I worked for, I, I, I used to have to fly here. I, had, I, was, I was in charge of five different states, and I was flying here, flying there. And, and I remember, I, said, I, I used to have a little program. It was called Ride With Me. So you make all that money. You do this. Okay, guess what? Once a month, one of my employees is going to spend a day with me. Come ready. One day. One of them quit halfway in after lunch. I want to go back to the floor. No, 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 no. Come on. We're going to finish. We can't covet titles and positions. We can't. I thank God for him allowing me to do this. But I told Pastor Bound, I think he and I were on the phone one day. I said, brother, give me a Bible study any day before getting up to preach. Any day. Because that's one-on-one. -on -one. That's me and them. I'm, I, can, I can, you know, any day. Why? Because that's discipleship. That's growing. This is important. But we have got to understand individually and corporately what we are to do in the body of Christ. No one night stands. If you haven't noticed, that there's been a shift in the leadership. I'll match, Sister Betcher said, told me this a long time ago, I'll match your commitment, not your potential. Okay. This is where we're at. I don't see it. Okay. Still love you. Still praying for you. But guess what? I'm about building the church. I'm about being the church. That's it. And here's the clarion call. Stand with me. Who's on this thing right here? That's you? How you doing, Christopher? <laughs> I hope I have given you a solemn reminder of our responsibility as the church. It's great having fellowship. It's great being around each other, but we got a job to do. So here's the call to action. Before you run up to the altar, before you flood the altar, out of, before you flood the altar, I'm going to pray that God imparts upon you your place in the kingdom so it's unequivocal in your mind. No more questions, no ambiguity, none of that. When I pray, it's going to be God placing their heart, mind, and spirit. Because everybody in here has a place in the kingdom. All of us. Of what it is. And when you got it, come to the altar and pray and believe that you can execute it. Got it? Lord, in Jesus' name. This ain't about me, Lord. <laughs> Truth be told, I'm putting you on the spot. All these souls that are in this place, God, some doubt, God, some don't know, God, some oh, think they know, some are sure in their place in the kingdom. But we're drawn quickly, God, to a place where there can't be any confusion or cloudiness or ambiguity, God. We need to know our place in the kingdom, God, and what you'd have us do, Lord. Lay that conviction upon our hearts, God, that burden. God, help us to be able to discern between a passion that we have and a, and a burden, God. They're two different things, Jesus. 
God, and I'm praying, believing, and asking, God, that right now in the name of Jesus that you impart a burden upon their hearts, their minds, this conviction that will grip their heart. The prophet said, it's like fire shut up in my bones. God, we need that right now in the name of Jesus. Lay it upon their hearts, their minds, and their spirits, God. And as they flood this altar, Jesus, with a burning desire, God, and conviction in their spirit, Lord, knowing exactly the charge you have placed upon them, God. Pour out your spirit, Lord. God, it'll do us well. The glory fall upon us right now. That we do your good and ultimate perfect will in the name of Jesus. If you got it, come. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. everyone find a place to pray. If it's in your pew, it's in your pew. If it's at the altar, it's at the altar. But we need direction tonight. Mm, thank you, Jesus. God, we love you tonight. Have your way in us tonight, oh God. Every one of us matter. Every one of us have a place. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Mm. 